Now, once you have run your samples and performed the unmixing, I would strongly recommend that you check the accuracy of the unmixing and make any changes if you need to. Checking the unmixing accuracy is fairly straightforward. It's very similar to checking the accuracy of your compensation. So you would just look at all of the single stains, all of your reference controls. Um, you will look at all fluorochromes against each other and check that the middle of the negative population matches up with the middle of the positive population so you can draw a straight line through both of them. And if you do find any issues in unmixing, you could potentially apply some compensation to that if it's just a minor fix. You can apply compensation onto unmixed files. So even if it doesn't quite make, make sense, like you're applying negative compensation, that can definitely be done. Otherwise, you can go back to the unmixing and redo it and see if you get better results. Now, if you have unmixing errors, then the way to spot them is to look at the negative population. So you can look at a fully stained sample, put a bunch of fluorophores against each other, and see what it looks like. So here's an example of two plots that look like they were unmixed well. So our negative population is nice and round. There's no really weird negative populations. Everything looks pretty great. For here, you've got this really weird diagonal shape. This one isn't quite as clear. Here's some other patterns. You're just getting lots of negatives, these kind of pointy shapes, diagonal shapes. Those can be indicators of unmixing errors. So oftentimes, here's another example where you sort of have this double negative population here. If you play around with how you, what axis you put, um, or what floor, floor for you put on the other axis, you could find that you may have some unmixing errors. So if we apply some compensation, move this population over, most likely this weird negative population will disappear. So finally, I don't expect you to necessarily know all of this right when you first start using the Aurora, but if you are confused about your data looking a bit odd, then definitely come meet with me. Um, I can also put you in touch with Monica DeLay, who is our SciTech Technical Application Specialist, or you can email her. Um, and that is the end of this training. So the next step would be to do the one hour hands-on training. You don't need to bring anything for that. We just prepare compensation beads. It strictly focuses on how to use the instrument itself. We also do run a monthly Aurora user group meeting. It's the second Friday of every month. And then make sure you send me your email so that I can add you to the Aurora user mailing list. I do send out a lot of updates to that list. So it's definitely useful for you to subscribe if you're at the University of Chicago.